Welcome to Temple of Queen Hatshepsut, the stunning panorama. One of the most beautiful temples we have here in Luxor. The temple of the only queen who ruled Egypt for a long time, 22 years, Queen Hatshepsut. Okay, as I told you, her story, one of the most interesting and complicated stories in our history. Her father was Tutmosis the first. Her father, by the way, was the first king to cut his grave in King's Valley, the other side, as he sent his architect, Enini, to go to the West Bank to find a place to cut his grave there. His architect, Enini, took the workers and after a long search, he came back to the king. Your Majesty, I had found the place you were looking for. So the king asked him, Enini, why had you chosen this place to cut my grave? He answered, Your Majesty, I had chosen this place for three main reasons. First, the quality of limestone here, very good, solid, strong. Second reason, it was a hidden place, away from the eyes, the ears of traders, robbers. Okay, the third one in the ancient times, especially during old kingdom period, they used to bury the king inside a form of a pyramid. And the first pyramid to be built was the step pyramid of Saqqara, pyramidian form. Okay, here as you saw two weeks ago, the top of the pyramid looks like a pyramid. So he told him no need to build a pyramid anymore like that. Back to our story. So the father of Queen Hatshepsut was Tutmosis the first. Her father married royal wife. As well, he married non-royal wife. From the royal wife, he had a daughter, Queen Hatshepsut. From the non-royal wife, secondary one, not from the royal blood, he had a son, a boy. His name was Tutmosis the second. After her father died, Tutmosis the first, his son, Tutmosis the second, was not from the royal blood. What did he do to legitimize his throne of Egypt? He married to his half-sister, Queen Hatshepsut, to keep the throne. Also, he married royal wife and non-royal wife. The royal wife, as you do know, Queen Hatshepsut. The non-royal wife, he had from her a son, a boy. Also, from Hatshepsut, he had a daughter, like his father. After he died, Tutmosis II, Queen Hatshepsut was an ambitious woman. She had a dream to rule Egypt. She invented a story. They call it the story of her divine birth, telling the people that God Amun, the principal god of Luxor, of Thebes at that time, had a relationship with her mother in the form of her father, Tutmosis I, and this relation led to a newborn child, Queen Hatshepsut. That meant that the god had chosen her to rule after her father. After her husband died, Tutmosis II, his son was still young. He could not rule. The Queen Hatshepsut sent him like outside the country, military campaigns to fight against the enemies of Egypt. And he was Tutmosis III. Queen Hatshepsut at that time declared herself as a king of Upper and Lower Egypt, having the same titles like kings, as well the typical costume like kings, like the royal kilt, having the cartouches like kings, depict herself with the false beard like kings, like males. Her stepson, Tutmosis III, after her death, he married her daughter. So for him, she considered three at one at the same time. His aunt, step mother, mother-in-law. To take revenge from her, he destroyed some parts of her temple 
as well he destroyed her cartouches as well he did some destruction at Karnak Temple on the east bank of Laksa. Es increíble este lugar porque puedes ver el río Nilo hasta allá, después ves las cosechas, se ve todo verde y hasta el final toda esta parte desértica. As you don't know, in the ancient time, Egypt was divided into two kingdoms, one in the south and one in the north. In the north, lower Egypt, and here we are in upper Egypt. And there were like a lot of conflicts, battles between upper and lower Egypt, till a king came from the south, his name was Mina, and was able to unify, unite between the two lands and he found the first capital Memphis in the north and in each kingdom north and south each kingdom had had its own king its own emblem its own capital for example the capital in the north was Memphis okay in the north Memphis and the king had to wear the red crown Okay. okay, and the emblem or the symbol was papyrus flower. Papyrus. papyrus. Okay. Here the capital was Thebes, Luxor. And the king had to wear the white crown and the emblem was lotus flower. Okay. Lotus and papyrus. We have lotus and papyrus. Two symbols. And as you can see here, Queen Hatshepsut in attitude or a form, we call it Osiris attitude, like that one. Osiris. Mummy for attitude okay. of God Osiris, God of the paradise, the afterlife, like that. We ring, as you can see, the false beard. She has the false beard as well. Sometimes the white crown, sometimes the red crown, sometimes the double crown. Vean, este es un cartucho en las piedras y es el mismo escarabajo que trae Lalo en su capa. Dios mío, estamos decodificando aquí los templos. Uh, this is temple has two chapels. The one you saw for Goddess Hathor, la diosa vaca, and this one for el dios de momificación. El dios Anubis, Anubis or Anubis, god of mummification. Okay, here we can see the two main scenes here for the queen, but as you can see, destroyed by her stepson. She's presenting different kinds of offerings to god Anubis here, and you can identify that. Okay, like the wine, the birds, the animals, lotus perfumes, different stuff, okay. okay? As I told you, the image of the queen was chiseled out, destroyed by her stepson, Tetmoses III. As you can see her cartouches, the oval shape, that one. Yes. Can you see the duck? Yes. This is the birth name of the queen. Okay. Her name where was removed, it chiseled out, yeah, by the stepson. And you can see the nice, colors for the sky with the stars to imitate the sky. A Queen Hatshepsut had sent an expedition to Somalia to get the incense trees and some other objects for her father God Amun-Ra because she was so proud of him. And her reign was a peaceful one, especially at the field of economy, economical one, okay? And here we can see her mission the details of her mission that she sent. We can see the houses of the people at the time. We can see their huts. We can see a ladder there. High up, we can see a dog. That one. Yes. Okay, here. And here is the leader of the country, of the army, Ba Nehsi of Somalia, is receiving the Egyptian mission, okay, or expedition 
in the front, the leader, his name was Ba Nahsi. Okay? Like saying, welcome to our country. And we can see also a scale. Yeah. And it's Horus on the scale, right? Yeah, Horus. Horus, god of protection and guardian of kingship in Egypt. Durante el Imperio Nuevo, el dios Amon Ra. Chequense, ahí arriba están los arqueólogos trabajando, haciendo nuevos descubrimientos. Y bueno, les queremos decir que en este momento Egipto está muy bajo de turismo, igual que prácticamente todo el mundo, pero está abierta a sus fronteras, puedes venir, puedes venir a visitar. Y lugares ahorita como este, como Luxor, que es uno de los principales y más importantes del país, pues vemos que hay muy poquitos turistas. Entonces, nosotros, nuestra experiencia desde que llegamos aquí a Egipto, nos hemos dado cuenta que hay una atención súper especial, te tratan de la mejor de las formas, porque, bueno, además de que ellos, pues, la principal actividad, como nos decía el guía en la entrada, es el turismo, en este momento, pues, están necesitando más que nunca. Entonces, los queremos invitar a que vengan a Luxor, que vengan a Egipto y que se den cuenta que en este momento nos van a tratar mejor que nunca y la gente está haciendo un esfuerzo súper extra para atender a la gente de maravilla. Así que los invitamos a Luxor.